Welcome back to the Urology Care Podcast. I'm going to let our guest right now introduce herself and tell us a little bit about her work. All right. My name is Sarah Vidge. I am a urologist at the Cleveland Clinic, Cleveland, Ohio. I specialize in male infertility and men's health, and I run our center for male fertility here. And I see a lot of patients with barrack seals every day. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Vidge. And we'll just start the conversation out by me asking you to explain what exactly is a varicocele. So a varicocele is dilated veins that come from the testicle. So the veins that normally return blood uh, from a man's testicle and cord, spermatic cord structures uh, dilate. And um, they can sometimes uh, be palpable, meaning that you can feel them. Uh, and they're, if they're very large, they can actually be visible. Pretty similar to varicose veins that you might see on somebody's legs, the dilated blue veins. It's the same thing, it's just inside the scrotum. Does a varicocele cause symptoms and can it be painful? Varicoceles can cause pain. So the dilation of the vein causes blood to pool. So men with large varicoceles will sometimes describe a heavy, sort of dull, aching sensation. Typically, it's worse with activity, and as the day goes on, uh, as you're upright, and those veins have more time to pool, and then when you wake up in the morning, uh, there's often less discomfort because the veins have not pooled. So not everybody with a varicocele has pain, but they, they can cause pain. Can you please tell us about how a varicocele may impact someone's fertility? So that's a very good question, and Varicocele is a, is a common cause of infertility. So about 15 to 20 percent of men, adult men, have a varicocele, but they're present in 30 to 40 percent of men who are seeking care for fertility. So that kind of tells you that they certainly play a role. And the exact etiology or cause of impaired fertility in men with varicoceles is probably multifactorial and not completely uh, teased out and understood, but there are several mechanisms by which the presence of that pooled venous blood can impair sperm production and sperm quality, which can therefore lead to impaired fertility. How common is this condition? So 15 to 20 percent of the general population, and then 30 to 40 percent of infertile, of, of men presenting to a infertility clinic have varicoceles. And do you mind describing some of the causes that we might know are reasons that a varicocele can occur? Yeah, so the, the probably the most um, accepted mechanism by which a varicocele can lead to impaired fertility is a, is a temperature-mediated process. So the testicles sit sort of uh, outside um, the abdominal cavity in a male, so they're cooler. Um, and the reason one of the sort of biological reasons for that is sperm production occurs better at cooler temperatures. So any process that re- that causes heat around the testicles can impair fertility. So you might hear men who are trying to conceive should not sit in hot tubs for a long period of time or put their laptop on their lap. These are all heat-mediated processes. A varicocele, when you have that warm venous blood pooling in the veins, that's there sort of all the time, you're, the, the temperature that the sperm production is occurring is higher. And this can lead to um, essentially to damage of the sperm. It can lead to fragmentation of the DNA, can lead to oxidative stress, and several sort of physiologic processes that can occur um, that really shouldn't. Can you tell us about how varicocele is diagnosed? Varicocele is diagnosed primarily on physical exam. So when you come into the doctor's office, we get our history, we do the physical exam, typically in a standing position for a varicocele, and um, we will feel the veins that are sort of right above the testicle, and then we'll have a man valsalva, which is uh, essentially when you're bearing down, like as if you were having a bowel movement, and um, there's a grading system for varicocele that we use based on um, what we find on physical exam. We will rarely add an ultrasound of the scrotum to help corroborate our physical exam if 
a man's anatomy is just a little bit difficult for us to be able to, to determine, but the majority of the time, it's all just based on our physical exam in the office. And what are some common ways that a varicocele is treated? There are several ways to treat a varicocele. Um, they are all surgical. There's no medication um, that will treat a varicocele. The, the sort of the gold standard for treatment is um, a, a incision that's sort of in the low groin, and uh, we actually use a microscope so that we can identify the veins, and we clip them or tie them. And the microscope allows us to avoid other structures that we don't want to injure in the spermatic cord, like the testicular artery. We don't want to reduce blood supply to the testicle. So this is called a subinguinal microsurgical varicocele ligation. And then there are other sort of similar techniques done through different incisions uh, in the groin a little bit higher without the microscope. You can also treat them surgically laparoscopically using little ports and the, our radiology colleagues can also treat varicoceles by um, going in through a vein and placing tiny little coils in the vein to, to obstruct them the same way that our clips would surgically. Does a varicocele always require treatment? What would happen if a patient chooses not to be treated? So that's a great question. It's not life-threatening in any way, so there's really no scenario where it's required to treat it. We treat varicoceles in men who are symptomatic, meaning they're having pain. That is classic for varicocele. And then we also, it's also recommended to treat varicoceles in men who have infertility, meaning they have uh, tried to conceive without a pregnancy for one year or shorter if the female partner is older. And they also have abnormal sperm parameters. Those are the two scenarios that we tend to intervene, but not everybody chooses to have it fixed. It's really kind of a a patient, uh, it's up to the patient as long as, you know, we counsel them on on the risks and benefits of repair. Dr. Vidge, do you have any other final thoughts that you'd like to share with us about varicocele before we wrap it up today? I think the main take home is that varicocele is a common cause of infertility in men and it's uh, it's often missed because men are not always seeking evaluation when a couple is having trouble getting pregnant and they may go to the female physician, the female's physician first. They're not going to be performing that physical exam and doing that assessment. So we always try to emphasize that this is something that we would need to diagnose on the male side and can can potentially improve uh, pregnancy outcomes both naturally and with assisted reproductive techniques like in vitro fertilization. So if you are struggling to get pregnant, please come see us. Of course, if you're having pain, then obviously come in as well. Dr. Sarah Vidge has been our guest today on the Urology Care Podcast. She is a urologist with the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you again for making time for us today, Dr. Vidge. Thank you very much for having me. This podcast has been brought to you by the Urology Care Foundation, the official foundation of the American Urological Association. For more information on today's topic and for all things urology health, visit urologyhealth.org. That's urologyhealth.org.